All right, guys, hello. Thank you for joining me down here again. We're back on the foreshore now. I picked up the very first thing I found, which is this piece of Victorian stoneware. Then I picked up another little base, but look at this. Isn't that pretty? So, does that tell me it's going to be a pottery day? We shall see. Okay, let's see what we can find. Well, would you believe it? Okay, fair enough, I'm in a pottery zone, but there we go, another piece of Victorian, actually maybe a bit earlier, it's press molded stoneware. And what do we have here? Let's just give it a whirl. Okay, some more stoneware, nothing on there. Thought it might have a little mark of some sort, but there we go. So, does this mean it's gonna be a pottery day for us? A really good indicator of how things sort um, by shape and size is that I found, okay, I put them back down, but three bases I found, uh, one of them there, a little base segment. So I keep finding base fragments of different types of pottery, but look at this tiny star on there. I absolutely love it. So, you know, the old saying, do, am I going to take it? Of course I am. Nice bit of, oh, look at that. That's a saucy fold on there. You can see how this rim has been formed. Oh man, I really need to move out of the pottery zone where it's going to be fragments for me all day long. I've just spotted another blue thing. Let's have a look. Oh, a little bit of hand-painted china. Sweet. Okay, yeah, for my health, I need to get out of the pottery zone. But uh, look, this is what I mean. So even though we're in the pottery zone anyway, loads of these fragments are all sorting close by to each other. So yeah, another indicator that the tide sorts, there you go. Things by shape, size, weight. All right, moving on. You know when I say I'm gonna get out of the pottery zone and I absolutely don't every single time, I was looking at this little piece, transfer wear, okay, nothing much to sort of sing about, but, um, oh, it's cute then. And then, here we go, a lovely piece of delft, where English delft, where it's like a bowl or charger fragment, that is super thick. It was like that. I thought, aye, aye, what's this? Turned it over, there you go. Gorgeous bit of Delftware. Tin gla English tin glaze with this cobalt blue decoration here, all hand painted. Um, yeah, love it. Love the fabric too, obviously. It looks so kind of biscuity. I think that might be an issue with me wanting to chew on the dust or something. But anyway, there we go. Lovely. Wandering into the uh, depths of unreality here because oh, I really shouldn't take this home, but look. You can see on this stone wall, stoneware bottle fragment, uh, probably held some kind of seltzer, mineral water. But look at that little telltale sign of what was in there. Uh, that looks like a 28. So that's the bottle style, I think, maybe. Check that out when I get home. Uh, see if I can find a complete one for you. Okay, am I leaving it? Doubt it. At this point, we need an intervention. Look at this though, how can I leave it? Well, by walking off, one guesses, but look at this. Hmm, the shape of that looks again like a plate. Small plate, this is the edge, or was there more? I think there was more, but look at this, cobalt blue again. Ah, uh, absolutely love it. Has it been in for that third glaze? No, the thing I'm talking about is some Delftware, you see this third glaze, second or third glaze is applied on the bottom, which uh, gives you a clue that it might be earlier because once we started knocking this stuff out quickly, we didn't bother with that third clear glaze or second, I can't remember if it's second or third, but so it gla gets glazed, decorated glaze, and then there's a third glaze that was uh, put on the base of some of these, um, vessels, pieces of pottery, and uh, yeah, they were doing that earlier on, so 16th century, 17th, early 17th, but anyway, waffling, taking this, here we go, what's this? 
We love a piece of writing, don't we? A piece of inscribed number or writing. <coughs> so I'm guessing 22, again, stoneware. It's referring to the bottle shape, I think. Someone will correct me. There's always someone that will uh, be able to put me straight. Uh, yeah, 22, taking it in the pocket. Look at this strange, strange old silvery fish that I found. It's a piece of nacre, a piece of mother, mother of pearl. I can't speak today. It's a piece of mother of pearl. Uh, look there. I wonder if maybe, oh, what's that? I think that looks fairly natural, doesn't it? But um, I don't know, that could have been drilled out, who knows, but quite a thick piece of mother of pearl. So I'll be taking that. And yeah, I mean, what a gorgeous, representation of the river, this sort of silver skin fish type of shine. Coming with me. It looks like an angel fish, but okay, there we go. Still not out of the zone, I spotted this little piece of uh, pottery sticking up west of wall, possibly part of a chamber pot. Uh, it's had a knock. But there we go, we can see something else interesting there. I mean, it depends how excited you get about pottery <laughs> and how excited you get about uh, the way it's been made and the human touch on it. I'm not so keen on that knock. I love this, I don't know, dribbly bit of glaze that's folded over. That's what it looks like to me. Yep, so there we go. Piece of Westerwald. Stoneware, likely German. I just placed my trowel down there on top of part of a pipe, but that looked like it had a foliate uh, decoration on there at some point on the seam. I'll leave this all nibble, but that's quite a, a tantalizing little piece. There we go. I have indeed, I have indeed finally moved over to a little metal patch, but look what I have found under here. So, oh, so yeah. I'm not sure what happened, I don't think there's going to be much of this, but it's very pretty, let's see, oh, <laughs> hardly any, oh, cute, eh? So it looks like transferware, a little transferware bowl, um, I'll try and find a match for that online because that is actually really sweet, it's like a, um, too big for an egg cup, but a sugar bowl or something maybe? love the detail on there and you know I always say don't neglect transfer wares they are in themselves a thing of beauty even if they're nibbled even if they're partial I'll get that cleaned up and we'll try and find them out. So I whipped around to put that piece of ceramic away and here bump there is a coin it is modern of course it's a penny but that's a good sign I'm just gonna stop in this patch for a while and see if anything turns up a coin a round thing washer whatever metal this size and weight always a good sign okay let's go this is what i mean we're gonna get a coin line going on here i can tell again modern but that's not really the point the point is that we're looking for other coin like things this shape and size or you know slightly different shape and size <laughs> around this shape and size there we go dropping it as ever all right i'll keep working until the patch and we'll see what we get so coins not so much but hey this is cool you see there these three little links i'll try and get in for you 
Now, I can tell, because these wider sections, that this is some chain mail. There we go, look at that. So, fantastic stuff. Three chain mail links, still linked together. So yeah, think of a knight's armor, if you like. But here are some other examples of chain mail. Okay, one piece is not as joined as the others, but that should allow you to see. Uh, you see there's a little piece bent back. And there you can see the other two, the actual, where the, where the chain mail is soldered together to close. Love this. Fab find. It's something so small and, you know, seemingly, it's a kind of a nothing. They're just little wire metal links, but they're so evocative of a period where people were wearing protective chain mail. So yeah, fab, fab find. Commonly called chain mail, a term which appears to have originated in the 18th century, mail armour has been around for centuries, spanning continents and epochs, and is still in use today mainly for abattoir workers to protect their arms and hands, and for diving with sharks for obvious reasons. Now, the origins of mail armour aren't clearly defined. The Celts have been credited, the oldest known example of mail armour found in Slovakia, in the tomb of a Celtic chieftain dating to around the 3rd century BC. However, an Etruscan artifact discovered in Italy, dated to the 4th century BCE, does challenge this notion somewhat. This artifact is a metal sheet from which hangs male links and is interpreted by some as proto-male, or a type of decorative male at the very least. The 5th century BCE gets a look in too in the Zoroastrian scriptures in which male armour appears to be referenced, also at Takibostan, from reliefs carved in around the 4th century BCE, although a century later the reliefs referenced earlier Zoroastrian divinities. It's widely accepted that male armour was a development of scale armour, first developed in the Bronze Age. It was an earlier type of protective metal covering which quite literally looked and moved like the scales of a pangolin or armadillo. The metal plate scales were attached to a cloth backing and to each other in many rows of overlapping pieces which offered full protection against weapons. Although scale armour offered a more solid protection from blunt force and piercing attacks, it's thought that the need for a greater range of flexibility, a movement range, and a need for a more economical armour led to ringed mail armour being created. This is how it works. Using drawn wire to construct individual rings, they were then attached to each other, most commonly using the four to one pattern, which meant one central ring, known as the connector, had four rings attached to it. Now you keep going with this, create columns and rows until you create a mesh. If you want to read more about this, check out my Patreon post. I will put the link in the video description. And for now, I hope you've enjoyed these images of male armor through the ages, including the stylish decorative elements incorporated into Persian and Turkish mail. I hope you've also enjoyed the examples from the River Thames. I've tried to credit where possible, but some of the examples I've found on forums. So if it's your piece of river found armor, I did my best to credit you, but let me know if you'd like me to put any links in the video description. So I picked this piece of hand painted china and what I love about it is you can see the merest hint of red detail on there. So it's not what has happened to it, it's gone, but a little hint remains. And uh, yeah, that's all we have to say about it really, but it's ever so pretty to see these little ghost marks that were there and now have seemingly just evaporated to time. Look at that little slipwear uh, addition there, beautiful. I love it when you can see this thin layer here of slip that's been added. Uh, and then there's some glaze. Lovely stuff. Again, redware, 1500 to 1800. This is probably 16th, 17th century. Am I gonna keep it? You're damn right I am. If you can resist it, I tell you, you're a better person than me. I can't resist it. I 
details, a tiny picture in itself. Look at that. Transfer wear Victorian to early 20th. So it's printed on. These were, you know, farmed out. Hundreds of them an hour. Or well, however many, I don't know. But just love it. Little picture there. You hang that on a borrower's wall. <laughs> So I just pulled this out, a really great example of a strap handle on a large jug. You can see there again where it's been affixed and incorporated into the body and then the thumb has been used to pull this down and drag this down into a strap. So there's a sort of the integrity of the handle sticking onto the fabric. The main the body of the jug is there. It pushed in that corresponding thing. See how that's pushed from the other side, and the handle has been pulled down. I will take that. I love a chunky handle. I love these examples. So yeah, red wear again. I'm in one of my fave spots, right? But. Like you always hear, don't expect to find riches. I mean, that is true. Don't expect to find riches and you can't sell them anyway. But also, it is hard going out here today. I've just come across another potential coin line. Um, and it's under quite a lot of heavy rock. So I will pursue it a little and see where we go. But yeah, I mean, it is hard going out here today. So, wish me luck. Oh, it was a two pence. I'm sure you saw that. There you go. I tell you, these coins are just bloody mocking me now. I really must stop swearing, actually, or I will be struck in the naughty corner. Uh, yeah, modern coin yet again, 10p. If you're wondering where all my modern coins go, they do indeed go on charity boxes. Okay, so. Let's have a little look, see if we can find another coin. There's Okay, 20 bloody modern coins later. I'm giving up hope there, but can you see what this is? Oh, it's a lovely one. What a nice colour. Let's see if it's intact or any nibbles. No nibbles. It's fresh as the day it was born. Well, made in this case, but oh, nice little air bubble in there. And that is a bottle with stock in late Victorian, early 20th century. I should think more early 20th century, but uh, yeah, nice. Haven't seen one for a while. So that's a cheerful find for a hard going day. A few bits of letter press are turning up. There we go, it's an N. I'm not going to take this one, so hand for scale. I wanted to show you this lid, maybe, like a drain lid or some kind of covering. Really love this, but I think it belongs here on the foreshore. It's a drain cover, isn't it? Nice bit of hardware. Leave it here. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it this time. It's not that exciting because it is to me. Look at that lovely bulbous belly of this. Um, stoneware vessel. Looks like it might have been quite small actually, a vase or a jug even. And I love the way it's broken in this twist. And then you can see signs where it's been on the wheel. This way, that way. Uh, love that twist to it. Yeah, Seaberg stoneware. Very nice. And I can see I can see the telltale sign of something metallic down here. You just see the so I saw it like this. See the little edges. Could always be a fruit seed pod, but no. Hmm. Looks like. How interesting. Is that a lid of something? A little measure or top of a thimble? No, it's not a thimble top. Is it's way too down. That's interesting. I'll take a look at that when I get home. It even be a domed button, but no. Give it a clean up when I'm home and we'll find out.
well it's night time so you're not going to see a lot from me right now but what is that it's a curious thing uh the answer is i don't really know but i'd like to know so maybe it, i'm just not looking at it properly uh i'm gonna get that home and uh have a look at what it might be some weird squidge of ceramic Okay, everyone, bear with me. It's me from TikTok. What I've done is lost the piece of footage that I need to um, use to show you what this thing is. So I've had to record a duet on TikTok and I'm dropping it in the video here with the explanation. If you can see around my head, you will be able to see what it is. Of course we know what it is. It was nighttime. It was hard to see. It is exactly that. It's a squidge of ceramic or pottery fabric. It's a piece of stoneware and it would have been squidged into this shape to act as kiln furniture. So it goes in a kiln amongst other pieces of stoneware alongside sagars and other types of kiln furniture. Um, it's to rest other vessels on that you're firing, but look at that, my fingers fit perfectly into that squidge that prized up from a lump of clay shape. Look at this, tiny star. It's gonna come home with me. Absolutely love it. Piece of soup, shoe sole, tiny child shoe. There's the leather, there's the sole, and you can see the stitching marks there. Oh, very small. I'm going to preserve that, even though it's not complete, I'm just going to make sure I preserve this leather so, yeah, I can keep this little child's shoe. When you see this, you know that we've reached rock bottom or the very top of a Slim Pickens day. What a hard going day. But there's a little green seed bead, which is nice. Shank there from some sort of, I don't know, fob or a uh, brooch or an epaulette, epaulette, epaulette or something like that. Um, I'm gonna keep I'm going to keep going with this area. You never know, something might turn up. But yeah, when you see the pin collection and you see <laughs> the bead collection starting, then you know, man, it's tough going. Even though it's hard going out here tonight, there are some little pleasures. Whoa, that's a weird one. So a corset busk hook, but a strange, that's not like the regular shaped ones we see. And then there's, I've just come across this patch, just absolutely loads of pins. Um, so hopefully there'll be something in here. We've got a nice little patch here. I think that's going to be some kind of lovely nipple button. And yeah, pins as ever. But I'll get that cleaned up when I'm home. I mean, it's really hard to see now, but it looks like that's gonna have a central shank. And another Sunday, it really do be like this, as they say. Hello, Queen Elizabeth. 5P gone brown. We keep on and still the coin finding continues. Well, it doesn't look like it's got any age whatsoever, but these things can be confusing. It's a blade, obviously. Serrated there. And yeah, a strange edge. I'm going to take it, speak to some nice people and see what they say. But uh, there we go. The blade at last knockings. Well guys, that is me saying I'm over and out from the foreshore today. You don't often see me down here at night time. In fact, I don't think you've ever seen me down here at night time. I don't generally come at night, but such is the need when winter turns around. So yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. Had some nice finds today, so thanks for tuning in. See you on the next.